is simulated by the film and broadcast industry, for instance, and they're all longer-term problems trying to de develop technologies. Of course, sometimes technologies are licensed out very rapidly where they have an immediate market. But really, the, where we start is to look at the longer-term things, and there's a lot of scope for industry to collaborate with us on that. And what, and what sorts of things do you um, think <laughs> would be in the pipeline and anything that you know, your companies might be looking to develop in the future that could you know, easily um, utilise resources at university here? So I, I Oh, jump okay, in, for um, it. Uh, Criterion Games. I don't know if you can, these microphones work, but okay. For me, we really have kind of two different types of R&D. Um, when we're in a project, we have the R&D pieces that are trying to solve a unique problem for that game. Um, where I see the work I'm seeing here today is the future focus side of things. So for us as a company, it's really hard to dedicate people to look at just ideas that may or may not come to fruition and that could inspire us to do something different with games, and that's what I'm seeing here is some of those ideas that could just spark off something and new and creative, where it's not necessarily about taking a problem from us, but us being inspired by some of the things we're seeing here. Yeah, I think there's also some interesting new domains, like sort of VR stuff is opening up some new, so for example, we just recently have been working with like HRTF for like audio um, positional stuff, for like when all you know, in a VR space, when you're looking around, you want the you know audio to all be positioned, and that's stuff we had no experience of, and so that's been working with Oculus and some academics as well to do that kind of stuff. So it's areas where new stuff opens up, and you're suddenly, oh wow, that's maybe possible, or academic research on you know muscle simulation, or or you know physical simulation, or like all this stuff that you sort of see something, and you're like, oh, that's kind of interesting. But then the flip side is all the challenges of, I mean, as most people who develop games know, like making a demo is like 10%, and then. The rest of it is, is actually making it shippable. And so that's, that's, I think, an interesting area to explore with, with academia is like, how do you go from just a cool idea that's like, oh, that seems interesting to actually saying that's shippable and make that a long term relationship is, uh, is a challenge. Mm. Sure. So, uh, I mean, I think for a, a, a lot of the games companies, actually, we do bring in sort of third party solutions to a lot of our problems. So, actually, I think for, for academia, it's potentially working with the providers of the services to the games companies, because a lot of games companies actually have to be very agile, very nimble, and, um, and are looking, I suppose, relatively short term compared to some of the things you said when we were talking upstairs, you said five to 10 year problems. The games industry really doesn't know what's gonna happen in two years at all, right? So um, uh, I think that that's, that's one of the challenges, I'd say, for partnering with a, a good number of games companies. It might actually be more the people that are providing middleware or hardware to the games industry would be my opinion. Yeah, in, in, um, in Europe for PlayStation, we do have an academic program. I think we've got PlayStation First and a bunch of um, universities. Some of the stuff um, shown today is really relevant to Morpheus and sort of um, head mounted display technology. So yeah, um, I'll get our guys to talk to you guys about how um, you could work together on that tech. I'll take this slightly. So the, the, a lot of the technologies you've seen today are about how we create assets and how we use assets in new ways with audio and graphics. I guess an area that I'm really interested in is are there R&D opportunities in how we as studios make our games and approach the, the collaboration between studios? Um, we obviously at Criterion, we work with electronic arts around the world. So R&D and technologies in how we communicate and create games globally could be something really interesting outside of just pure graphics and audio technologies, if that's a, something other people are interested in. Hmm. <coughs> it's certainly an interesting to discuss. I think I probably don't understand the, uh, you know, where we could contribute in that area uh, and how that would fit with the kind of things we focus on. But it, it may well be that through further discussion, there's, there's areas there where we could contribute. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think one of the interesting things for my perspective is, is obviously our engagement from so many uh, with the universities been very much with the uh, communications uh, department uh, for 5G research, although from so many point of view we are involved in some of the research, other research areas. Um, but, but obviously uh, the challenge really is, is bringing some of these things together. So, uh, so I think this afternoon it's been, been very good from my point of view to hear about uh, lots of work on audio, which of course is important to us at Sony, and also on the video aspect, really, because some of the 
applications or user experiences we're looking at has to build upon several of these research areas. So, so how to use these research activities within the university to, to, to make some quite uh, maybe interesting ideas or prototypes ultimately, which potentially could be demonstrated on this test site at the, uh, at the 5G facility, I think is particularly interesting to me. Yeah. Well, I think uh, when we talk about collaboration, there's two things I'd like to say. Firstly, is there's a there's a corporate approach to to collaboration, which is obviously through funding and sponsoring, and and then there's a smaller business collaboration where you know a small studio uh, like Fireproof or Hello Games or or even Twenty Two Cans would have no budget for anything like a corporate. And I wonder if you or someone could talk about the distinction between those corporate partners and then the smaller, much smaller company partners who, you know, may be working on some crazy stuff uh, because that's the definition of a small studio is their DNA should be working on crazy stuff, um, you know, without and, and much more legal. Yeah, so there's options for everybody. So there's a so yes, there is, and there's, all, there's a whole range of collaborations from just a discussion um, and feedback on the work that's going on, right through to large scale projects. Certainly my experience is some of the best collaborations I've had are with you know, startup companies or very small companies where they're very focused and you can fit into that um, and you, you've got a direction and you know, things move very rapidly. And if the research problems are aligned with that, that can work extremely well in terms of licensing and actually getting things used. Um, at the other end of the spectrum, working with someone like the BBC or one of the big film production houses, you know, it's a completely different story, but you have to, you know, and there's big pipelines you have to fit around and all of that sort of thing. But there's a, there's a lot of interesting things and maybe longer term things that you can do there. So there's a whole spectrum of things. And, and actually, one of the things is in terms of funding, I mean, most of our funding in the end doesn't come directly from the companies, it will come from government agencies and things like that. So it, it can work, whatever size of company that is. Um, there's obviously an overhead to running the projects and that need, needs to be balanced against the gain you get from it. But um, you know, with the right model there, it can be extremely beneficial from both sides. But the starting point is always a dialogue. And how did you come up with the ideas for your projects? Is it, you know, some community coming to you saying you've got this problem, or we're going to, you know, we need to work for five to ten years, or, you know, do you guys come up with the problem and then go to industry, bit of both? So, so, I mean, idea generation comes, so you can have the academic idea, if you like, that's a kind of spark and something interesting to work on, a bit of inspiration. But ideas often come out of, you know, a dialogue and talking with, I mean, the reason I like to engage with industry is because actually find out about what, what are the real problems that would be useful to solve, rather than the problems I can dream up that are maybe never useful, in that sense. So, one, one way that you identify things that are kind of interesting from a research perspective, but also have some potential to be a benefit to industry or the economy or um, for wider use, is to have these dialogues and to understand where, where are the bottlenecks in what you do and the limitations of the technology and things like that. Any questions from the audience? I've got a question. <laughs> so, um, so um, Thank you for asking that question, Peter, because actually I put myself in the pot of a small company with no money to spend on this. Um, so one of the other things that concerns me, and you might have an answer to this, is potentially intellectual property ownership from research. So how does that, how does that work? How can I make sure that there's not some tie? Yeah, so, so the intellectual property will, will depend a bit on... Um, where the funding's coming from for the research and, and what the nature of the research is. Um, so at one end of the spectrum, you have a consultancy type arrangement where usually it's 100% IP to the company. At the other end, you have a more explorative PhD project, which is funded by government, where you get early access to the IP, but you know, it tends to be the university that owns that. And there's a, there's a plethora of things in between. 
Um, what I would say is one of the first conversations we have when we start collaborating is what, it, what are the expectations on both sides from that. Um, and you know, that's something we're very used to dealing with. It's not usually an obstacle unless it's, you know, that discussion is delayed until you've actually invented something. It's too late to kind of lock it down. But yeah, usually talking about it early on, there's ways to resolve that. And, and you know, we're re very respectful of, you know, in the end what we want to do is do good research and high quality research, but we also want to get that, that used. And one of the ways you know, that industry needs to use that is to be able to have early access to that, to have the IP or control of the IP in some ways. And we you know, certainly very respectful of that and try to find mechanisms to make that work. Yeah, just, just one comment on, on that. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I think in my experience, uh, and certainly we've, we've engaged with a number of universities uh, on various projects, sometimes collaborative and sometimes biological. And uh, in my experience, I think IP whose role is, uh, I think I've said it right, in the role is being able to come up with a good uh, formula. Obviously, more challenging when you've got a lot of, uh, of uh, collaborators on a project. But, but very often, uh, from a university point of view, maybe after some period of time, through, for example, innovation vouchers, R&D tax credits, uh, where you get cash back for uh, loss-making SMEs, uh, patent box, and other structures to try and assist uh, very small companies to get involved in R&D, and the university has a uh, technology transfer office, which I believe, uh, there's people here, they may be able to engage with the university effectively at the level that you work, rather than at this very high level of some of the things we've heard this afternoon. I thought I'd just say that for information if you're interested. Thank you. Great, so we're involved in some of that, in advising our clients on, on some of those issues as well. So, yeah, very happy to talk about them afterwards um, if anyone has an interest. Um, so, I guess my last question, I'm going to get everyone started on their beers, is uh, <laughs> whether you guys have any ideas for you know, useful collaborations with universities. Sorry to be on the top. I think it's a question of how you start that relationship. I mean, I think this is a great event, and, and I completely um, uh, agree with Lisa. Having I, I moved to Guildford about a year ago, I was kind of surprised that all the four sort of community and community university and community studios. So, if you are thinking, you know, if you are working on a tough problem, if you're, you know, thinking about some interesting ideas, like how would you sort of, you know, do we just knock on the door and say, you know, I, I've got a real problem with animation depression. Is there someone who can, like, you know, help me figure it out? Is, is that literally the, you know? up and, and go from there? How do, we, how do we get the ball rolling? So, so my experience in all the collaborations I've been involved in it is you know, someone coming and asking a question or me, me going and talking with someone and, and finding common points where there's interesting problems to work on. Um, so that, that to me is always the starting point. You know, look for the people who've spoken to today um, or look on the web pages, you know, things like that. Um, or get in touch with you know, someone in the area, and they'll probably be able to point you in the right direction. That's often, you know, how, you know, an initial contact will start, and then you can see whether, well, is there expertise in that area that's useful, um, and follow that through. I mean, certainly, um, following up from today, if there's things that are of interest, then a good thing to do is, is to arrange, you know, a couple of hours to come along and talk in a bit more detail about the particular things you're working on, where, where the areas of interest are. And most likely, we won't be able to solve it solve all of the problems, but there may be two or three things in there that, that could be fruitful to work on, um, or find ways to work on, yeah. Can I just add a, a comment to that? Um, we also have, because it, it's a recognised as your head of business development to our research enterprise at the local university, and this is a recognised issue that sometimes it's very hard from the outside to navigate your way in. Obviously this evening connects you very much into uh, Adrian's team and uh, other colleagues here, but if you are stuck on other areas and want to find your way in, we do have a business development team and a very simple uh, email address 
Office, which is Business Development at Surrey.ac.uk, and if you fire something into that, and you can circulate that to Business Development, we can also help navigate you to the right place. So there are other routes in, but obviously tonight is about getting them directly connected with the right people, which is superb. Thinking about that from a different angle, is when we're as studios, we can be so deep and heads down in making the games. I'd be really interested in how we can integrate more university people, whether it's through internships or other things, in the studio to help us identify problems that we might not be able to see ourselves or have the time to kind of look at. I think that'd be something to be really interested in involving more. So certainly at both undergraduate and PhD level, we're very keen on internships. Um, all our undergraduate programs pretty much run placement years and things like that. So, so those things are really good. You know, to, to be able to pull someone out of a PhD program to come for a couple of months to work on something um, is, a, is a really good way of exchanging. And it's great for PhD students as well to get some real world experience that are outside of the university. So, so that kind of thing, either undergraduate level, you know, summer, summer thing, kind of internships and that, or kind of longer term things. Um, also, you know, the placement schemes that we run are a great route for graduates who think they want to go into an industry. You know, it's a great kind of tester from both sides, if you like. And, you know, if, if it's successful, it often turns into a longer term uh, relationship. So, uh, one of the things I was going to say in answer to your question, Jacqueline, I do have an idea, but I'm definitely not going to say it out loud in front of a room for the people. Unfortunately for your question, but there you go. As a lawyer, you'll understand that. Um, uh, on, on the sort of thing we talked about collaboration, I mean, we were chatting away upstairs, and I think um, for me, you know, Guildford is a fantastic hub, fantastic, really strong hub for, for games development. And I think that it would be great to see Surrey um, be, and I've mentioned it as the, the coined the Abate of the South, you know, but we need to collaborate on that. And if we can do that, then more of the research uh, activities that you'd like to see happening will happen. Um, but also we can get better students that we need more of. We certainly need more computer science students from the UK um, come out of perhaps Surrey and into, into our industry, as well as art and design and everything else as well. So I think there's some, some excellent ways that we can collaborate. Um, and obviously this, doing this is a great start. And you know, we should do more of these type of things, basically. Yeah, over in, um, in Europe, we've, well, we've always had interns and placement students. I got my job 17 years ago because my friend at uni was on a placement. So um, we do that, we've always had um, interns or placements or graduates come in to get an experience in the industry. Um, more recently, we've started to, within the R&D group, have sort of postgraduate people come in to do one or two years research with us in a certain area. I think we've got a few more joining in the next few months. So definitely worth um, you guys talking to us or any other um, university that's interested and we can see if there's any way to collaborate. Great, thanks everyone and thank you to our lovely panellists. And uh, enjoy the beer, the bottles.